Freeman looks for payback against their arch rivals on the hardwood as the basketball regular season comes to a close. Welcome to Sportswire, I'm Will Catterley. As the final games played out, one of the teams in good shape to have a high seed heading into the playoffs was Douglas Freeman. The Rebels came into Friday night's contest against Godwin with a chance to add to their five-game winning streak and all but clinch a top three spot in the upcoming postseason tournament. Standing in their way, the Eagles, who were the last team to beat Freeman, and were looking to play spoiler on senior night. So we go to Douglas Freeman, and yeah, it's senior night. Godwin faithful in the stands, as is Freeman dressed in the camo on the right. Godwin going with the whiteout theme. Fans are great in this contest whenever they play. And despite what the record may be, Godwin had it going early and often. Number three, Scott McDonough had 12 on the night. So did this guy, Michael Cogashell from deep. He hits the three, Godwin with the early advantage. They won the first matchup at home, looking to sweep the regular season series at the home of the Rebels. But Michael Pappas and Douglas Freeman have other ideas. Still in the first quarter, you saw the three ball there. Then some transition defense. And that's Corey O'Shea. You'll hear more from Corey O'Shea later in the program, maybe even in this game. Godwin was getting everything they wanted. Trayvon Booker from way deep. And Freeman in the first matchup, they did not shoot the ball well. This game, they didn't have a problem shooting the basketball. Michael Fortune for three, 13 points on the night for Fortune. Still though, Godwin getting what they want as well. Again, it's Kagashell. 28-21 at the half. Godwin in good shape up seven. Pappas trying to change things. That three ball cuts it to four. Michael Fortune and Pappas. There's Fortune, he hits the three. Michael Fortune and Gray Pappas doing the dirty work. Pappas from way downtown, he hits a three. At one point, Freeman was down 12 points. They go back to back to back threes, and then again from the corner pocket, count it. Gray Pappas, 20 points on the night, brings Freeman from down 12 to up by one after three quarters of play. Yeah, they were down 12 in the third. Godwin says, we'll have none of that, thank you very much. Bradley Thomason from deep, but then big play. Freeman down, but not out. The bucket up and in, Freeman back on top. Gray Pappas for two, again of his 20. Later up by three is Freeman. The short elbow J, got it. Nothing but nylon for Tyshawn, Action Jackson. Godwin and Freeman deadlocked at 48. 5.2 seconds to play, Freeman with the last chance. Fortune! Does it shine on Freeman? No, the putback, yes, but it was after the buzzer sounded. So tied at 48, we're going to overtime. Free basketball, more free highlights. The bucket again by Pappas. The overtime was dominated by Douglas Freeman as they seized old Uncle Mo momentum to take control. Douglas Freeman gonna finish the regular season at 19 and three, get the number three seed in the upcoming playoffs. 59-52 is your final. Meanwhile, at Lee Davis, it was the wrestling meet to end all meets as several area athletes grapple on the mat, working as hard as they could to take the regional championship and qualify for states. And this was an event that started Friday at four in the afternoon. We go to Saturday evening where the best of the best, that's right, the championship round of wrestling would commence. We start right off at weight class 103. Christopher Tate of Verina, Khalid Beasley of LC Bird. That's a takedown and two points for Christopher Tate. Then Tate later has Beasley in a serious predicament, almost gets the pin. Either way, he still gets points. And what I love about wrestling at this level in the championship match of regionals, so much emotion. You don't see as much of it in the regular season, but when the playoffs come around, they've worked so hard to get that medal. Congratulations to Christopher Tate, weight class 106, regional champ. By the way, the top four, all you have to do is make it to the semifinals. Top four of each weight class move on to states. There's two points for another Verina wrestler, Caleb Olgers, taking on Blake Mazanik from Glen Allen. And Olgers! He's got Mazanik in a predicament, and he gets the pin, yeah! 
I got some, I got some muscle, says Olger. So Varina in the low weight classes, 106 and 113, both get big wins. One of the best of the best, well really, the best team here on that nice little reversal you saw there is Lee Davis. And Lee Davis was looking good, especially in this match. And you can see the, the <laughs> coaches there, that fan in the background really loves it too. Noah Loving beating Garrett Chandler Mills Godwin four to three at weight class 132. Now I talk about raw emotion, J.R. Tucker, weight class 138 and Lee Davis. Lee Davis may have had the better team, but Caden Plummer in big trouble of Lee Davis because Ryan Morton of J.R. Tucker's got him almost pinned. And will he get it? Yes, he does. And just check out the reaction. He gets the win. He's like, I'm going to celebrate. No, let me compose myself. And then finally, Morton getting a chance to hug coaches and hug his fellow teammates. And then he's going to, I mean, almost break down in tears. These guys work real hard all year long just for moments like this. Awesome moment for Ryan Morton and J.R. Tucker at one weight class 138. He is your regional champ at that level. Well, let's move on to... Fisher Evans of Lee Davis just looking absolutely unstoppable. Taking on Ibram Bechter of Hermitage, but he gets the pin, and there's some raw motion. Let's go, he says. Fisher Evans with the pin at 1 minute 49 seconds. That's a takedown if I've ever seen one. This guy from Prince George, we're watching. Jacob Kennedy, he's a beast. At 160, taking on Godwin's Charlie Stanton. And he doesn't, I'll give Stanton a lot of credit here. Most people would allow themselves to be pinned this late when they've been just exhausted because Kennedy was just the better wrestler here. Remember though, this is a championship. Both these guys go in the States, but I will give him credit. He did not allow the pin. He did lose by major decision, 14 to two. Moving on to the higher weight classes, Henrico and Freeman. Henrico looking good here at 182, but hold on a second. Caleb Jacoby says, I'm gonna reverse my fortune against Ellis Stores. And at three minutes and 46 seconds at weight class 182, Jacoby gets it done, he gets the pin. And there's a win for Freeman. So he wins the regional championship. Again, both wrestlers going to states. Now what about the big boys? You try to move somebody who weighs 285 pounds, you better be 285 pounds. Well, they both are, obviously. J.R. Tucker and Highland Springs. It's Kyle Starrett for Tucker. Derek Walker, Highland Springs. Starrett gets the win in the pin. Lee Davis wins the meet. Atley finishes in second place overall. Congratulations to all the champions. We head back to the hardwood when we come back. Deep run and Tucker guys and girls hoops on the other side as the Wildcats look to finish strong. Plus, signing day turned out big numbers at Hermitage and Godwin. That's next. Don't always have time to watch Sportswire on your TV? No problem. Episodes are available anytime on the web at WatchSportswire.com. And it works just as well on your phone. Watch Sportswire anytime, anywhere at WatchSportswire.com. Welcome back to Sportswire. Let's go to Hermitage High School. Signing day event from last week. It was a big one for Hermitage. 12 overall, eight Division I. Let's start with uh, Defensive All-Metro Player of the Year, Mateo Jackson, the linebacker. He signs his lot with James Madison. A heck of a kicker seen right here going to Old Dominion in Alex Burton. Let's go right down the line. Hampton got a pair of brothers. First, Juxon, Justin, I should say, Jackson. He signs with the Pirates of Hampton, and so does Jordan Jackson. So, nice pickup by Hampton. Congratulations to both Jacksons. Landon Jones casting his lot with Virginia Union. So, congratulations to Landon. He will go down the road. And uh, the newest Navy midshipman. Nice signing here, Jabril Murray. Joining the Naval Academy. Congratulations to him. We've got some others too. UVA Wise gets more than a couple. Shaman Fox, I get two brothers. Again, second brother tandem. And Lamon Fox, and then in this awesome tux. I love it, man. JMU. 
going to go Percy Mayers. Meanwhile, UVA-wise again, Jalen Barnes. He signs on the dotted line and gets it done. And here is Jamal Robinson, another pick for JMU. Three for JMU overall, and uh, just a tremendous class once again. And Webster Hill, the fourth great running back. He signs with Davidson, so he'll be the newest Wildcat. Uh, great photo op for Coach Kane's last class, and maybe one of his best. Just to say I ever thought we'd be signing eight Division One athletes in one signing period like we did today, 12 total. No, I didn't envision that, uh, but we did have high expectations. Speaking of high expectations and speaking of 12, Godwin had a huge class in all sorts of sports all the way down the line as uh, family members and teammates came to watch. Uh, we'll start with Deanna Dominic, conference champion in golf. She signs with Longwood. She was a VHSL Girls State Champion, first in the College Prep Tour Girls Division. Maddie Had for Georgia Tech, women swimming. She was a 2015-2016 USA Swimming Scholastic All-American. We stay with swimming where Sarah Malloy signs with TCU. She'll be the newest Horn Frog. And uh, we had quite a swimming class. This is Rebecca Rogers. Congratulations, signing with William and Mary. And she'll join their swim team as well. Molly Wheeler, got one at a good field hockey team. Sewanee Field Hockey. She signs with Sewanee. And she had 10 varsity letters, including, of course, field hockey. Not done. We go to track and field. And Johanna Lupica, go down the road to University of Richmond. Daniel Ahrens, how about men's soccer? Yeah, Godwin was pretty darn good at that. 2017 All-Metro, part of the All-Metro team for Ahrens. He signs with Longwood. Scott McDonough, Florence Darlington Tech, good baseball player, career 373 batting average. He'll take that to Florence Darlington Tech. An MIT signing, are you kidding? Corey O'Shea, I said you'd hear him again. Yeah, great basketball player, but he's gonna sign for baseball. He got nine varsity letters in three sports, volleyball, basketball, and baseball. Not to be outdone, John Bryson signs with Hampton Sydney in guys lacrosse. And Sean Bowers, Glenville State College gets a good one. Uh, this is a football player, three-time letter winner and three-year starter, great defensive back for the Godwin Eagles, and last but not least, Alan Massey, going to Hampton City for football, member of the Big River Rivalry All-Star Game. And of course, once all the introductions were formalized, the moment you all been waiting for, they all sign on the dotted line to move on to the next level. Congratulations to everyone at Mills Godwin. Well, let's go up the road to Deep Run High School. Three soccer signees on this day. You're looking at Tyler Chardin, Randolph making signs for soccer. There's Alex Sauer getting a soccer scholarship as well at Randolph. That is Lexi Long, and she loves gymnastics. She loves soccer. She's going to MIT. She also loves... So I love computer science, math, engineering, and they're simply one of the best at it. So um, when I went and visited and the coach told me that everything looked good, that I just have to be able to get in and I can play soccer there, I was like, all right, like it was really pushed me. And I love that they're D3, so it's not quite the commitment of D1, but it still has a team atmosphere. You're still part of a team. So I really love that about MIT. The whole campus, it's really beautiful. Um, the coaches, the players, I know personally a few players that play for them. And uh, yeah, I think it's definitely a perfect fit for me. The school is really nice, and I like the environment. It was in, it's nice and small, so I don't have to really get the teacher kind of student relationship. Going. Speaking of deep run, we go to deep run taking on Tucker, and this is the longest handshake I've ever seen. A little awkward. Great entrance, though. Both teams looking to finish their season on a high note. Wildcats getting it going inside early. Number 21, Jack Sweeney. For two, Tigers out and running in transition. What an athletic move. Check it out. Number 11, Omega Weaver. And then this is just a nice little pick and roll all the way to the hoop. Sweeney making his presence felt in the first quarter. Tucker, it was back and forth. It was a seesaw affair. They come right back at you. You saw him in the intro. Keon Dickens, 13-10. The Tucker Tigers would have a three-point lead after one quarter play. Second quarter, trying to get it going from the outside. And another but nylon for number 25, who knocks it down. Trey Sean 
Wood from deep. Wildcats come right back, and their recipe for success was inside and put up and in once again, and then trying it again. This time, Tucker was the wiser. Finish it with a slam a jamma. Nice job by Keon Dickens, who dunks it down. And more Tigers. How about that? The floater. You can't stop that shot. Treshawn Wood for two more. 22-20. Tigers hanging on with a two-point advantage at the half. Second half. Back inside they go. Does J.R. Tucker. And never a bad option when you've got Chris Dean inside. Chris Dean making wonders. And Michael Belden for two as well. So deep run going on. A little bit of a run here in the third quarter. When you get it going inside, you can stop, pop, and hit from outside as well. Jack Sweeney had himself a ball game. He connects from long range. J.R. Tucker, though, not done. Steal, count the basket, and the foul. A lot of nice highlights for the Tucker Tigers in this one. That's made some great plays. Omega Weaver again, and then from way downtown, count it. Kendall Jackson in rare vintage form from deep. Wildcats say we can do that too, though, and they win going away. 49-38-5. Let's go to the ladies and senior night for the deep run ladies. Quite a few of them honored last home game. They're taking on Tucker as well. We start in the second half, and big time shout out to Brianna Payne, who scores two down low. She will score 1,000 point of the year. It wasn't on that basket, but it happened in the same week. Uh, deep run coming right back, still third quarter action. Number 21, Anna Smith had herself a ball game. And the Tigers fighting back, going back down low. That's Daisha Goodlett, and that's good for two. Give me the ball, I'm open. Inbounds plays working well for the Lady Tigers. And again, this time, Micaiah Walker. She's had a solid season for Tucker. She gets it to go. Anna Smith, no foul call, but she gets her own rebound, and the putback is up and in. Wildcats have the advantage. Then moving the ball around. That's a long deuce, but it counts for Natalie Nettemeyer. And uh, Wildcats looking pretty good. Brianna Payne says, I'll bring the pain. Long J for two is good. Brianna, one of the leaders on this squad, really scored big time points when they needed it the most this season. Tigers in transition, but not anymore. Great hands, extra excellent effort in the extra pass. Number 22 to Taylor Parker. And it would be 41-31, a 10-point advantage going into the fourth quarter. Caroline Bolliard really showing her skills defensively there to make that play work. Number 15 showing off her shooting skills. Haley Sanford connects from three. Brianna Payne. Man, when she got that jumper going, she went next level as a player. She connects from long range. Tiger's not done. Still down double digits. Not for long, the putback, up and in, count the basket and the foul, Daisha Goodlett. And the Tigers within arm's distance, but late in the ball game when it mattered most, great ball movement, usually reaps the benefits, gets big time rewards, and it did right there. Number 23 with the three ball, Veronica Dance, and then from the other corner, got it to go, 52-44. Deep run wins on senior night. Well, we take a dip when we come back as some of the best swimmers in Henrico show their talents at regionals, how one school was dominant and quite a few events came down to mere tenths of a second. That's straight ahead. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I don't know where to start. That's why we're here. We're free. Handsome. Oh, I think we're breathtaking. And here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. <laughs> Gary, financial aid forms. Biology homework, Chief. I got this. <coughs> Is that brand? <laughs> Colleges love extracurricular activities. Well, uh, chess really isn't my thing. I got this. Doesn't matter. Go ahead. Picking a college, man. You and us go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Fire and ice. Those don't really go together. Go to getschool.com for more info. 
Welcome back to Sportswire Picture Time. Yeah, for the very first time ever on Sportswire, we got swimming highlights. It's a Region 5B Regionals at Swim RBA in Chesterfield. Just, uh, not too far from Meadow Brook and Iron Bridge Road and, you know, that area. Let's go to the guys 50 meters. This is some exciting stuff, I got to tell you. In the 50 meters, guys, just two laps. It's going to come down to the wire, and who's got it? Who's got it? In lane four, Lee Davis would get the victory to the girls' 50-yard. Quick, quick, quick. There's some really good swimmers for Douglas Freeman. There's some good ones on Godwin and Tucker as well. And this would absolutely go down to the last tenths of seconds. Just watch lanes four and five at the finish. Godwin's Sarah Mallory, she's gonna accept her uh, medal right there, out duels Sarah Bender from Douglas Freeman, 24.11, 24.87. Mallory gets the victory. By the way, speaking of dominance, this girl scene right here, Carter Bristow was absolutely phenomenal. She won four events, including this one, which is the 200-yard freestyle, and she won by a lot. She helped Douglas Freeman ladies win the whole event, amassing a total of 488 points. Back to the guys. Freeman dominant in this as well. It's the 200 individual medley and no one is close to Dane. Yeah, his last name is Ripple, R-I-P-O-L. He takes it by a lot. And while his hair looks all right there, check it out. That's what chlorine in a pool can do to your hair. Just kidding, he kind of made it up on his own. He takes first place, his teammate thinks it's pretty hilarious as well. Let's go to the girls 200 individual medley. Godwin and Freeman in for quite a fight in this one. And it's all about Lizzie Danforth in lane four. Besting Godwin's Annabelle Young in lane five. And she's like, did I really just post that time? Yeah, you did. Two minutes, six seconds, point eight one. She is your winner. Uh, it was a lot of Freeman, but also a nice win for J.R. Tucker in this event. What a race this was, the 200-yard freestyle. And it came down to, as you see, the finish, Christopher Delavelle, who wins it for J.R. Tucker over Reed Hutchinson. Freeman wins region. Back to basketball now. Henrico Lady Warriors having a tough year, trying to get their first win of the season at deep run. First half highlights. That'll work. Number 14, Lauren Harrell with the putback off the missed free throw. Wildcats come storming back, however. They would hold a decent advantage in this one. Number 23 with the shot. Veronica Dance, 10 to four after one quarter play. Only down six, however, is Henrika. Wildcats feed the girls down low. Donati Uta with the points in the paint. And they would go to the well once again. Check it out, that's Pilar Weiser. She puts it up and in for two. Henrico was not done though. Check out the hustle, number 32 with the steal. She missed it, got the steal, put it back up and in. Great effort. Henrico gonna go on a little run here and then check out the extra pass right here. To the girl outside, Amani Mahmoud counted for three. Henrico bringing it back down to just a four point. Advantage for the Wildcats. Deep run though on the inbounds play. That's when you know a team's coached up well is when they execute on inbounds. Veronica Dance does just that. The Wildcats not finished. Extra pass inside. I even fight on that fake. It's good enough for number 31, Katarina Kovanis. They'd be up 22-12, 10 point advantage. Second half highlights now. And the Wildcats would go on a run in the third quarter. That bucket is up and it is in. Hannah Green doing the honors. Wildcats, saw them earlier in the show. Good passing team when they do that, they're tough to stop. Anna Smith down low for two. 
He also played pretty good defense, although Henrico is going to make a nice athletic move right here to get the bucket. They did not quit. They did not go away, but Deep Run did start to get a little bit of space in the second half. Elbow J got it. Wildcats in control in this one, and then putting the finishing touches, the pass to Caroline Bulliard, who's going to find number 24, Hannah Green, back outside. Got the three ball to go. Wildcats win this one going away. 50 to 28, you're fine. Let's go back to Freeman. Look at those cool portraits that were drawn on senior night for the Lady Rebels. Nicely done. Talk about a keepsake. And yeah, they were nice. They were really nice. Freeman was playing nice. The three ball, number two gets it to go, Lauren Hargrove. But then Rebels again from the outside. Beyond the arc, they were blistering it. In this one, come on, she says. Monique Fountain of Youth for three. Up by one is Godwin. Only up one, 18, 17. Better make that four. This girl can shoot. Stephanie Bunce connects from long range. And then this girl can pick your pocket. She's going to be something special. Thea Clark, only a sophomore. Heck of a point guard and a great defender as well. She gets the points to go. Uh, no going away and no quit with Douglas Freeman. Counted and the foul. Three-point play the old-fashioned way. 28-19, however. Nine-point lead for Godwin. And then second half, more Godwin Lady Eagles. They're going to be a tough out to come regional playoffs. Libby Smith connects down low for two. And then the patience. And then the moves. Beats the double team. Haley Woods. And then Godwin. Going to sweep the regular season series over Douglas Freeman. Great entry pass down low. 37-25. You're fine. Well, back to signing day ceremonies. We go to Glen Allen where foot, four football signees will sign on the dotted line. Is that a nice crowd in there for the ceremony? You're looking at Nick Stephanophagus, who didn't even know if he'd play his senior year. He's going to Washington Jefferson, one of the best institutions in the country academically. Uh, and then right there you're seeing Dexter Walker. He's going to sign with Bridgewater as they put their pens to the paper. Mitchell Shepard going to go to Bridgewater. You see Olin Merriman right there going to Shenandoah. I'm, I'm real hard on myself, so, you know, uh, honestly just getting stronger, you know, becoming more aware on the field, you know, just stuff like that. And as, you know, time went on, I got more confidence about my abilities. I'm excited to be in a program that is known as a winning program now throughout and under Coach Soriani. They're going to be through a winning spree for a while now, so I'm glad to be there. Well, I took the visit last weekend, and it was a long process. We went to a bunch of schools and talked to a bunch of different coaches. It was it, was, it just felt like overall the best fit for me. I'm excited. Um, it's been my dream since I was five, so when you get the chance and opportunity, no matter what division it is, it's just exciting and a blessing from God that you get to do what you want to do. Now to Tucker High School, congratulations go out to Michael Jackson signing with a football scholarship to VMI. Take a look and listen. Uh, Michael Jackson and his family here for his signing today, so if we give those guys a great big round of applause. And my family, my mom, and my dad, for um, always providing you know support for me and being a great support system. I also got to thank my guys, my bros, my teammates. Um, um, I wouldn't be able to get through these last four years without y'all. Y'all kept me focused. And I also want to thank all the coaches, the teachers, the mentors, um, especially Coach Gary, Coach Earl, Miss Murray. Um, Y'all definitely helped me as well along the way. And I want to thank everyone here for coming out and supporting me as well. Um, Y'all also like the main people who came and supported during the season, like came to our game, so that means a lot. So thank you. And while February 7th was the official first day of the signing period, there will be plenty still to come down the road as others make their final decisions. Remember, if you have questions or comments about the show, just send me an email to this address, sportswire at henrico.k12.va.us. And you can always follow us on Twitter. I can't wait to see y'all next time on SportsWire.